guests on Keel always heard via the Jack Spring Electric Keel Newsmaker Hotline. Joining us now is, <clears throat> pardon me, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, just what happens when you get old, you cough more. State Representative Alan Seaball is here. Hey, Mr. Allen, welcome back to Keel. How you doing this morning? I'm doing wonderful. How are y'all? We had a chat last hour with State Rep. Danny McCormick, and he made reference to... He said the Allen Seaball, the proposed legislation that would, and rather me, rather than me tell you what he said or speculate, why don't you tell us, based on the governor's announcement yesterday, what you are proposing, what it would take, and what you want to happen? All right. It's not really legislation. It's not a bill that gets filed in Baton Rouge. If you look at the statute that gives the governor the authority to make an emergency declaration, or a, uh, whether it's health-related or weather-related, there's two different statutes. They both have provisions for the legislature to override the emergency declaration. We were really hoping to not have to do this. We've been meeting with the governor and trying to get him to walk this down to join our neighboring states and starting to reopen businesses on May 1. And up until about 3.50 yesterday, we thought that's what he was going to do. In fact, he told us. We, we had a conference call with him. He met with the speaker, he met with the Senate president, and he came on a conference call with the Republican delegation and told us that he was going to start reopening restaurants and hair salons and small businesses on May 1. And then he did a complete about face yesterday without telling anybody and said, no, we're going to keep everything closed for two more weeks. So that's just not OK. Uh, pardon me so, just a second, um, Mr. Pardon me just a second, Alan, because we had I referenced our conversation with, with Mr. Danny last hour. Representative McCormick, and I asked him the same question I'll ask you. I said, based on what you had heard, based on your conversations with the governor or the governor's staff or whatever, and then given what the governor announced yesterday, do you feel that you and other legislators were m misled? No question about it. Uh, uh, I would say lied to, uh, just to be a little less, a little more blunt. But that, yeah, he clearly lied to us. He lied in a Republican delegation meeting. He had, I think, 63 out of the 67 Republicans on the phone, and he said, businesses are going to start reopening on May 1st. I can't tell you exactly what it'll look like. We may l limit uh, restaurants to every other table or, or hair salons to every other chair or something like that, but it's going to start reopening. I mean, he, that, that's a direct quote. Why would he have lied to y'all? Why, would, not, he have, why would he have deliberately lied to you, Alan? I, I, Ten minutes ago, I was on the phone with, with the speaker, and, and he asked me, he said, he asked me that exact question. What is his end game? Why would he lie to us? I said, I have absolutely no idea. I followed up with, I'm always nervous when I can't figure out what my opponent's up to. But he's got an end game, and I don't know what it is, but bankrupting the state of Louisiana and bankrupting the businesses in Louisiana and the people of Louisiana uh, is not a worthy goal. I don't care what your goal, what, what it end he's trying to achieve. It's not something that we can do. At some point, you have to figure out or accept the fact that the cure is worse than the disease. And look, there are people that are at risk. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I ha look, I have a mother and brother that are cancer survivors. Brother had a kidney transplant. He doesn't need to be going out in public. I mean, I absolutely understand that and agree with that. And people that are at risk uh, need, need to take special care. And uh, we're not advocating, you know, going back to the way everything was in February. But because I, I don't think even if you completely took away the, the emergency declaration, uh, I don't think the people of Louisiana would go back exactly like it was. And we're not stupid. P people are going to continue to use caution. And, 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 you know, it makes sense. But the fact of the matter is the state needs to reopen. There never before in the history of the human race, to my knowledge, have we quarantined healthy people. Quarantine mm -hmm. sick people? Sure. At risk people, absolutely. So what? Uh, but, what now? When? How does this measure come before the legislature, right. and how soon? Uh, well, it could be this week. It, here, here's all it requires: is a petition. It's not a bill. It's not something you file in the legislature. It's a petition signed by a majority of either house, and 53 House members or 20 senators, and uh, the, the Senate is working on it. So is the House. What and makes the governor have yeah. to go have to abide by a petition? State law. If you look at the statute that gives him the authority to declare an emergency declaration, par the next paragraph says majority vote the legislature. If, ma if majority of the surviving members of the legislature sign a petition, then he's got to revoke it. He doesn't so have state he, law. he doesn't have yeah. veto authority over that pet petition nope. or anything requiring nope. a two thirds majority. 
Nope, it's not even it's not even half of each house. It's a half of either house. So yes, I mean the law is pretty clear. I've had the attorney general look at it. I've had lawyers on the house staff look at it, and I haven't had anybody yet tell me that we can't do this. So obviously, everybody therefore, agrees. if 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 you could get the house members just simply to vote along party lines, it would pass and pass easily, right? Yes, and we're we are currently polling the Republican delegation. And it's I, I, we're going to get to 53. I mean, I, I feel fairly certain. We, I think, to my knowledge, we're halfway through. We've only had two people say no. And then, um, and, uh, and one so of them was a not yet. Let, let me jump ahead. It passes. And then what? Yeah. Well, that, that's the question. Um, it, th- what the House cannot do is make special rules or stair step when businesses can open. All we can do is overturn the emergency declaration. So it would be over. The quarantine, the stay home, the the size restrictions would be over. But the governor could say, I disagree with, I mean, you know what I mean? And I'm going to send the National Guard out and we're going to shut your hair salon down. What I'm hearing is that, pardon me, Alan, let me just, what I'm hearing is that that the, the emergency stay at home, the one currently in place would be done then he could issue another, say, less restrictive order. <laughs> would he, would he no, issue just no. another order? No, he can't do that either. Because if you read the statute, it says it, when we revoke it, we can prevent him from issuing any others for that particular emergency for a period of time. And we have in our petition 60 days. So he would be prevented from issuing any other COVID-19 related executive orders or emergency declarations for 60 days. Okay, so let me play devil's advocate for a second. Somebody's listening right now and they're going, oh my God, Alan Seaball is trying to plunge us into chaos. Convince me otherwise. I'm trying to reopen the state. I mean, I, again, people need to use common sense, but I trust people to make their own decisions. I've, I've been getting emails, Facebook messages from business owners telling me their stories and, and, and not just owners, but employees. People who are who are dying on the vine. People and look. Let's just be perfectly honest. Poverty kills more people every year than than a lot than sickness or disease or other things. I mean, po- poverty kills people. And what we're doing right now by this stay-at-home order, by closing businesses, by telling people they can't go to work, by telling people they can't earn money, we're forcing people into poverty. And that's absolutely ridiculous. It's it. There are a couple of parishes in the state that have had zero hospitalizations for three weeks. This is not affecting Wynn Parish. It is not affecting Vernon Parish. There's no reason for the rest of the state to be held to the standard of New Orleans. And and had, had he done it on a region by region or parish by parish basis and reopened some things, we wouldn't be doing this. He told us he was going to, and he didn't. He lied, and so we're taking this extraordinary step. We didn't really want to take. Uh, the, the, this petition's been in the work for about three weeks. And several people said, let's hold off and see what happens on May 1. If he does what he said he was going to do on May 1, um, I don't really want to side because I don't. it's an extraordinary step to revoke a governor's emergency powers. Does he know y'all but, are doing this? Does he Have y'all told him, hey, we're going to oh, do I'm this? Sure he, I'm, I'm sure he does now. 